That's right. This is like following a treasure map. Right. One pace to the left. Right. Easy. Easy. Oh, shh, quiet. Coming in on a wing and a prayer. We're coming in on a wing and a prayer. Oh, oh, too many steps. Oh, dear God. Too many steps. Oh, oh my hero. Oh. Your hero, no sleep. Seven o'clock in the morning and a, and a criminal record longer than your arm. Oh. oh, oh. But you're cute. You're cute. Hey, hey. Oh, what More a night. What a night. From the wedding reception to the jail, to the airport, to take Penny and Don to their plane. I don't believe it. Isn't that kind of strange? I mean, don't you think it should have been the other way around? What, from the airport to the jail? <laughs> no, no. Just I mean, isn't it usually Just the newlyweds that go off to faraway places? Oh, yes, darling. Yes, it is. But then, of course, most newlyweds don't spend their first night in jail, either. That's right. We're Oakdale's version of Bonnie and Clyde. Watch this. King and queen of the rackets. You bet. Start pouring, baby. Okay, every move. Did you, did you see me? Look at those hands. I'm glad I'm the doctor. Did you see the look on John Dixon's face when McCluskey showed up with the Oakdale police? Uh-huh. I, I think did. he thought I set the whole thing up in retaliation for his setting up our first dance together, the beer barrel poker. My favorite Dennis. number here. The top. And you know what? Your mother was so wonderful. Pardon me. Yes. Uh, she kept running around saying, don't worry, don't worry. My son and my grandson are lawyers. They're going to take care of everything. Yeah, we'll all get the chair, probably. Oh. Mm. Oh, it's sour. Mm. Do you realize <laughs> that our wedding reception is the first one in Oakdale history that will go down on the police record instead of the society? <laughs> well, you have to admit I'm a man of my word. <laughs> I told you that our lives together would never be done. That you did. you are to slip into something more comfortable. I thought I was supposed to say that. You are. Don't you think that you should slip into something more comfortable? You would save yourself a lot of inconvenience if you just give yourself up now. Why don't you stop just stalling, Mrs. McCall, and come on down here? <laughs> Shut up and get down here. I hope you haven't heard anything dramatic, like uh, yell at me too loud or something like that, because you, you know what will happen, you'll die. You, you will, you'll die because the police will come out and you'll die in a barrage of bullets. That's exactly what will happen to you, and how do you think you'll feel? How do you think your mother would feel? She would feel terrible, especially if I'm with you. Are you taking me with you? Is that it? Is that what you're going to, you're going to take me with you? Not in a million years and have to listen to you talk? Come on. No, wait, wait, wait. You don't know. There may be some cops hiding behind there the bar. There is nobody the down the here, Mrs. McCall, and I'm losing my patience. All I've done for the last hour is listen to your voice. Come on. Well, I have to talk. I think talking is very important. Sometimes it helps me be able to reach poor souls who have to, who have to mend the, their evil ways. Don't Watch you my lips, Mrs. McCall. Unless you shut up and let me think, I'm going to shove you out the nearest porthole. Do you understand? Oh, I think I do. Good. Good. What McCloskey expects us to find in here, his men have already torn the place upside down, inside out. 
But we are going to stay here and keep searching until we find something. Like what? Like anything that incriminates Haskell. Because no matter what happens, nothing's going to convince me that Frank is not an honest cop, Cal. I don't care how bad things look, there's got to be a reason for this. Well, you are one stubborn lady. You can go to bat for me anytime, Maggie. I already did, remember? I got you cleared. Now let's find this needle in a haystack. <laughs> This portion brought to you today by All Vegetable Crisco. Crisco makes pie crusts flaky. And by today's Pringles with a delicious deep fried flavor. Oh, oh sorry. I, oh, I'm excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Do you know, uh, next to marrying the most beautiful woman in the world... No. <laughs> do you know what my favorite part of the wedding was? Oh, both of our families being together. Right. Mm -hmm. Penny and... And Don and Mom, Franny, oh, Andy, you Betsy. Oh, I'm so sorry your daddy couldn't be here. Oh, I am too. I really missed him. Just turn out. Yeah. You know, I really would like to see more of my brother and my sister. You know, maybe we could do that sometime. It's a good idea. I mean, I know, uh, well, she's in London and he's in Salt Lake City, but geographically, it not exactly the twin cities, but uh, I think we could do it in one trip. How about uh, how about sometime this summer? This summer. You know, I'm not sure I'm going to be awake by this summer. I am just not used to being up all night long. Stuart and Franny really seemed to hit it off pretty well, didn't they? Uh huh. Oh. My daughter dating an English lord. When he marries, will his wife be a lady? I mean, is that the way she'll be addressed? Oh, honey. She just met him. Lady Frances Hughes Cushing. Queen will see you now. Ah, yes. You can just see Franny. Buckingham Palace. Serving the Queen. And that whole crowd. Tea and crumpets. I wonder if she even knows what a crumpet is. If I know my daughter, she probably thinks a crumpet is a... Uh, a wind instrument used by a rock orchestra. <laughs> Did you hear that one? I said Franny probably thinks a cr Lucky I'm not gagging you. Gag me? Why? 
Oh. Yes, I'm sick of listening to you. Oh, no. You talk oh. and you talk. And you don't tell me the one thing I have to know. Where is my ledger? I told you a hundred times, I do not know where your ledgers are. I don't know what you're talking I'm about. I'm talking about the books and markers that are missing from my safe. Most for one thing, they're not on my dress, are they? <laughs> Jack. I feel like I can call you Jack because I feel like I know you well enough by now to call you that. I mean, after all, you've had your hands all over me ever since... Ah, don't get cute with me, Mrs. McCall. Oh, Mrs. McCall. Jack, do you think maybe you could just loosen that a little bit? Not on your life, It's bad for my circulation. Where are my ledgers? Ow! That is really too tight. Where are my ledgers? If your ledgers are so important, I'm sure the police have them by now. Let's assume for now they don't have them. Where are they? Oh, please, this is too tight. Where were they? No! Where are my ledgers? Oh, all right, all right, all right. I'll tell you, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're in this, uh, cleaning bucket. Cleaning bucket? Yes, yes, the cleaning bucket. It's, it's... What cleaning you bucket? You are hurting me. Could you just... What cleaning bucket? In the, the one that's in Diana's cabin. You see, those things that you, that's so important to you, they're wrapped up in a, in a plastic bag of some kind of water. I stuck them in this cleaning bucket. It had lots of soap suds and stuff in them. The cleaning bucket? Yes, the cleaning bucket full of suds. You should have seen it. That was good. Yes. yes. The cleaning bucket, huh? Open your hands. No! Oh, no! You're nobody's no, fool, no, Mrs. McCall. No, no. Oh, no. You talk too much. But you are nobody's fool. <laughs> a cleaning bucket, huh? <laughs> I hope for your sake. They're still there. Well, looky here. What is it? It's a hairpin. Must be Diane's. Oh, terrific. I guess that's not going to do us much good, is it? No. No. How did you get in here? Same as always, lady. I walked in. Yes, but you're not supposed to be here. It's off limits. Didn't you see the policeman outside? Yeah, I and saw him. He let you in here? Well, I told him I had to clean up in here. Well, you better get out of here, because the boat's closed. Watch it, lady. There you go. Maggie, you were a little hard on her, weren't you? Well, what was she doing in here, anyway? Let's just finish searching the place and get out of here, okay? <laughs> hey, you okay? Yeah. What's the matter? No, I'm not all right. The gal is so hopeless. <laughs> Man. We're never going to find come anything. On, come on, come on, Maggie. Nothing is hopeless, huh? Yes, yes. Oh, no, no, come on. Hush, hush. Hush, hush, hush. Sorry. It's better. Don't ever do that again. Let's turn this place upside down because I've got to clear Frank. This week on Capital, Ronnie is out to settle an old score. You think you have the right to go around judging people because I could tell Tyler a few things? There's nothing in my past that you can threaten me with. Are you sure, Julie? Then on Guiding Light. <laughs> He's got a gun! You gotta help me! India! Has time run out for India? Well, I guess you weren't so smart after all. Well, we struck out in the surveillance room. What next? Well, I don't know. What about the casino?
casino. Whatever you say. Probably won't find anything there either, but... Yeah, but maybe they overlook something. It's possible. What are we waiting for? On to the casino. What the hell are you doing? I'm making a list. I'm trying to reconstruct what happened. I'll reconstruct it for you. My mother's been kidnapped. Now, why isn't somebody taking action instead of making notes? Will you just calm down? We're trying to find some kind, follow some kind of procedures. Procedures? Since when have you been such a stickler for procedures? Because I screwed up because I didn't follow them. Why don't you just relax and just let the police do their job, okay? you help but over here well, don't worry he's just upset about his mother i know but he doesn't make it any easier give him a chance <sighs> this thing operation has messed up a lot of lives but it's going to be over soon and you two are going to be okay what about you and maggie yeah shows huh? oh yes it's been showing for a long time can i help no, no, but thanks. Look, it's just too complicated. She, um, she doesn't trust me anymore. She thinks I was on the take. She What? She, that I was working with Haskell. How could she possibly believe that? Well, I can't blame her. I mean, she, she had no idea that I was working undercover, and I couldn't tell her. Well, why don't you tell her now? I can't. I can't until Haskell is caught. I mean, that's regulations, and wait I'm not going to... Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're talking about your marriage here. Right. Like a... What? We just got a lead on that guy, Lewis. Yeah. Haskell's so-called accountant. Got to get on it right away. I want you to come with me. Hey, that could be it. All right, come on. Let's move it, will you? I am going to spend the rest of my life teasing Dad about last night. <laughs> Some way to end a wedding reception. Yeah. Jail. <laughs> you know, it's weird. If Lisa had been put in jail, we'd know where she is right now. Yeah. The clerk and Brian won't rest till they find her. Not to mention the police. <clears throat> Fran? Something else happened last night. Yeah? What? I am um, met up with someone I know. This photographer. Rick Putnam. Rick Putnam. No, you don't know him. It was after you went away to Yale. Somebody you went out with? No, not nothing like that. Well, what is it? Guy you're interested in? Come on, tell me. I, I'm scared that you're not going to want to hear this. Of course, of course I want to hear this. <sighs> okay. Rick Putnam is the photographer who took the pictures for the fashions catalog. I was one of the models. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't too pleased about that because I wasn't a professional model. And you know how I am. I got really intimidated and really scared. And so when he offered me to go to his studio and teach me how things worked, I took him up on the offer. Well, what happened? Start taking pictures. And he started making moves. And I just didn't see it coming. I didn't see that he was going to try to rape me. Oh, and now I can see it so clearly. I can't. I I'm just so stupid. I can't believe I couldn't see it coming. Marcy, why didn't you tell me? Because I just felt so weird. I felt so rotten. I didn't know. I thought it was my fault. Anyway, you were way at Yale. And when I called you, you had your own problems. And... Anyway, Franny, I saw him at the reception. I don't know what took over me. I just, I just got so angry, and I ran over to him, and, and he grabbed me like he did before, and just everything just rushed up, and he just said he was going to finish off what he had started before.
Mr. Rick Putnam is here, my lord. Hmm. Mr. Rick Putnam is punctual, isn't he? Shall I uh, send him in, my lord? Oh, not yet, Elfie. Give me five minutes to get ready for him. He's in for the surprise of his life. This portion of As the World Turns has been brought to you today by Love's Disposable Diapers. Your baby's comfort begins with Love's. And by Jif Peanut Butter. For a fresh peanutty taste, choosy mothers choose Jif. We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. As the world turns. And you kept it to yourself all that time? I told Barbara when she got back from Australia. I am so stupid. No, you're not stupid. But it's awful that he got away with it. Why didn't you tell the police? Because he told me nobody would believe me, and I believed him. I mean, my past speaks oh, for Marcy, itself. Oh, Marcy, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. I felt like I was going crazy. Marcy, I don't understand why you thought that no one would believe you. I mean, who would imagine you'd lie about something like that? Who? My mother? Your father? That was a long time ago. You're a different person. No, I'm, but I'm still a weird person. There is still something wrong with me. I don't know how to act with guys. I am still a virgin and I am scared of men. I don't know what to do around them. Somehow I have this knack for attracting the wrong ones. And I never get the ones I really want. I am so scared I'm going to wind up like my mother, Franny. I really don't know what is wrong with me. I really don't know what is wrong with me. Oh, Mr. Putnam, my lord. Lord Cushing. On guard, Mr. Putman. Always in fencing your game. Hmm? <laughs> Actually, it is. I won a few medals in college. You surprised me. I figured you'd be in uh, tennis whites or a smoking jacket. Not today. You gonna change out of that getup, or you want me to photograph you like that? No, I think this will be fine. Thanks. Suit yourself. I mean, you're a pain. I imagine this must be quite a change for you. Photographing someone in fencing gear? Uh, photographing a man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand that you work mostly with women. Yeah. Yeah, women models have always fascinated me. They, they, they seem so unapproachable and aloof. Are they? Not really. Hey, come on, what do you mean, not really, hmm? Well, a lot of the ones I know are very, uh, approachable. Ah, I see. I take it that you speak from personal experience. You could say that. Yeah. I suppose as a photographer, you're in a very good position to make them approachable, hmm? Well, now you could <laughs> say that, too. I mean, they trust you, right? They want to please you. And you have, a, have the upper hand because they need you. And it's their <laughs> job to do exactly as you say. You got it. Ah, that must be very pleasant. I ain't complaining. Hey, now, will you be careful with that thing? Okay. Yeah. I suppose if you wanted to, you could take very good advantage of the situation, couldn't you? Uh, you want to get on with the shoot? Hey, tell me, have any of them ever complained? Hmm? A few, but then it's after the fact, and uh, it's a little late. Uh. Hmm? <laughs> so you always win, huh? Usually. Not always, but usually. Sometimes they put up a, a little fight, you know what I mean? Like Marcy Thompson? <laughs> But come now, Mr. Putnam. Surely you remember Marcy Thompson. No, no I, don't, I don't know any Marcy Thompson. Marcy Thompson. Listen, do you mind if uh, we get on with the shoot? I mean, I got other appointments. Uh, one of your rare, unsuccessful conquests, I believe. And a girl whose life has been badly damaged by you. What, are you crazy? Take it, Mr. Putnam.
How do you know? I'm a doctor. I know everything. Oh, yeah? Such as? Such as? Awake or asleep? Mm. You're beautiful. Mm. man. Oh, I'm so lucky, too. Is it still daytime? Mm-hmm. The first day of a very long and very happy marriage, Mrs. Hughes. <laughs> Boy, do I love to hear you call me that. <laughs> I can't believe you're here. I can't believe it either. But I'm glad I am. Me too. You know what else? What? I'm a little nervous. You too? <laughs> Why you really? Hey. Mm -hmm. We're married. I know. Yeah, we are. And I love you. Oh. I love you too. But. But what? I know that I am going to just. Love being your wife. But uh, we can still be friends, too, can't we? I think so. But check with me later. Not chicken soup, but it might help. Some coffee. Thanks. Oh, we'll find her, Tom. It's just gonna take some time. It's the meantime I'm worried about. Yeah, come on, get in there. Watch the suit. It's not one of your offer racks. Yeah, sit down. Shut up. Suit's the least you gotta worry about right now. I want to call my lawyer. Later. Where's Haskell? I know my rights. I'll bet you do. Where's Haskell? What a Haskell? I don't know what you're talking about. I have been telling you all the way down here I don't know anything about a Haskell. Hey, you're going to stop lying, you understand? We've seen you on the yacht with him. We've seen you in the casino. We've got you on tape. Hey, we're wasting enough time here. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I want to call my lawyer. As soon as you tell me where Haskell is. Listen. You know what's happening here? You are depriving me of my rights. Oh. I am a citizen, a voter. I've got my rights. Like all the other gangsters and kidnappers? Who are you calling a gangster? What kidnapping? All right. Name? Smith. Oh, yeah? And what comes next? You tell me. Gee, bum, I'll tell you what comes next. I'm going to keep you here till next Christmas if I have to. I'll put you so far behind bars you'll never get out again. S M I T H. Smith. This is eerie, isn't it? No people, no music. Well, it was great while it lasted. In spite of Haskell, everybody enjoying themselves, all the noise, everybody having a good time. I doubt they're laughing now. It's 
place has hurt too many people, Cal. Yeah, I guess you're right. I was just getting carried away. It's not over yet, and God knows what's happened to Lisa. Oh. Hey, be careful there. Well, you know, I caught my foot. Oh, well, wait here. Let me try. Ah. Oh, oh. darn it. It's stuck. What was that? Ah. I didn't hear anything. Listen. What is that? I don't know. Hey, wait for me. Where's it coming from? It's probably just a boat rocking. That's no boat rocking. It's pounding on a pipe or something like that. Let's see if we can find out where it's coming from. Here, Maggie. Don't you think? No, wait. It's louder over here, Maggie. Come here. Over here. Okay, right. We're getting closer. Still covered? Yeah, we got a man outside. Nobody going on or off? No Haskell, none of his people? Not a chance. We got the whole dock roped off. Good. All right, thanks, and you can go on home. Thanks, Lieutenant. All right. That's it? You can go home? Hey, Tom, the man worked all day yesterday and all last night. Well, I've been up all day yesterday and all night tonight. Are you doing anything but watching that yacht, Lieutenant? Why don't you just calm down? Calm down. What are you, nuts? My mother's being held hostage by Haskell someplace. All right, we're gonna find her. We're doing our best. Your best? Is this your best, Lieutenant? Because if it is, I'll find her but myself. Margo, will you do something with him? You do something with me. You just relax. Margo, you tell your husband to butt out, go on home, and let me do my job. No. Nah. No, no, no. Butt out, go on home, and let him do his job. And now that I've followed orders, how about you and me doing a little investigating of our own? What? Just you and me, baby, okay? I love you. <laughs> the sequence, you'll crush them. Come on. I still think you should report the guy. Fran. I mean, I can look back now and say, I should have done this, I should have done that, but at the time, I was so scared and I was so confused. I was totally wiped out. Yeah, but uh, couldn't you report him now? Yeah, I could, but... But what? But I'm nervous. I feel like it's too late. I don't have any proof, you know. Look, I think you should go to the police. That way, if he tries it with another girl and she reports him, then at least they have record of your complaint and they know what to think about it. I, I mean, I know you're right. And Margo told me the same thing. I should. Will you do it? I don't know. You know, Franny, you, you don't really know how upsetting it is. I think I do. And I bet it would help if you took some action. You know, it has helped having you around. You've made me feel so much better. And I've just talked and talked and talked. I haven't even let you say two words. You want me to say <laughs> two words? You're terrific. Fran. I really mean it. You've been through so much. I don't know how you did it. I don't know how I did it either. <laughs> but having you here has made me feel so much better. Really, you know, I think it's time that I start thinking about changing my life around. Taking some control, not feeling so sorry for myself. Oh, not taking my problems out on other people like poor Stuart. Why? What happened with Stuart? Oh, well, he was so nice and sweet to me the way he always is at the reception. And I was so awful. Oh, don't worry about it. He'll understand. He's a very nice guy. I know he is. Too nice for the way I treated him. I'm going to go. Wait a minute, where are you going? I am going to say I'm sorry to a very nice guy. Mm. 
Mm. You don't remember Marcy Thompson, eh? Dark hair, Mr. Putnam. Dark hair and a sweet smile. I told you. I don't remember her. Marcy Thompson. Hey, what are you doing? This is crazy. No good, Mr. Putnam. They're locked. You see, I want you to remember her. And I think this will help. Are you out of your mind? I don't know you and I don't know her. Damn you! Think hard, Mr. Putnam. Think hard. Touche. I wish we could stay like this forever. In bed? Mm -hmm. Kind of tough seeing my patients this way, but I guess they'd get used to it. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, alone. Mm. With no television, no radio, no newspapers, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Just us. We'd live on love alone. That sounds perfect. Oh, it would be so wonderful. Mm. Just you and me, Ken. Wow. Is this terrific? Yeah. Here I have the girl of my dreams. I, I don't have to chase around after her anymore. Wait a minute. What? What? Just a minute here. What makes you think you don't have to, Buster? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Somebody should answer that. Somebody should. Let me rephrase that. I think you should answer it. No, you should answer it. Tell them nobody's here. You have an honest voice. They'd believe you. Come on. <laughs> Come on. It could be important. Hello. Yes, Barbara. <laughs> what? What do you mean? What is it? Well, when? When did it happen? Is it one of the children? No. You're at the shop? No, no. No, it's okay. I, I'm glad you called. Okay, kid. I'll talk to you later. What's the matter? Well, it's Lisa. She's disappeared. Okay, so I'm done with you. Get out of here. Hey, put this bum in a holding cell, will you? I can't wait until my lawyer finds out that I didn't get to make a phone call. Oh, yeah? Well, I can't wait until you're convicted and thrown in jail. That's that. Uh, I'm out of here. Wait a minute, wait a minute! Where the hell do you think you're going? I've had it with sitting on my hands, Lieutenant. You've had it? What is this, a social club for prima donnas? I finally could use to settle a husband down. Now I have to listen to the same garbage from you. Look, I'm sick and tired of doing nothing. Frank, you're an experienced cop. You know that half the job is sitting around waiting and hoping for a lead. We don't have any leads. That's the problem. We don't have any time. Hi, what about that guy? What's his name? Ah, Lewis. Forget it. Forget it. I've lost enough time with that bum. He still claims that he doesn't know Haskell. Well, where is he? I put him in the holding cell. I put him there until uh, one of Haskell's high price lawyers gets him out of there. Frank, get back here. I can't. I said, wait a minute. I don't have a minute, Lieutenant. I've got something important to do. On this case? No, it's something else I have to work on. And then I'll be back on the case. What could be more important than breaking this case? My wife. I'm going after my wife. I wish to hell I was back drinking! 
No, I don't. What are you staring at? Didn't you ever see a deranged police lieutenant before? Lisa, oh, thank God. Lisa. Yeah, Lisa, it's all right. Yeah, get what there at home. Oh, that Haskell. Where is uh, he? Is he still in the yard? I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I've lost all track of him. I've missed him. All right, just hold on, hold on. I'll try and get... He's got these ties so tight, it's going to take a little while. Lisa, why did Haskell do this to you? Because I have the books that he wants. He can't find... What, do you know where they are? Uh, uh, Lisa? Lisa. Oh, I just want to get out of here, please. All right, hold on tight. Get me out. We'll get you out of here. on most of these CBS stations. Hayes Gown by Arnold Scazzi. Menswear by Barney's New York. Join us tomorrow, for as the world turns.